You should avoid moving a Scott still unless you can handle these five things. Stay tuned to find out what they are. Let's take you somewhere special. We are doing a crazy video today about Scottsdale, Arizona, where we're going to be brutally honest with you about what it's really like to live here. And we're going to talk about the five big negatives where if you can't handle those, you might want to reconsider moving to Scottsdale. But we'll also give you tips and tricks on how to handle them. Because remember, there's so much good about here and there's always going to be a few negatives. But these are the five big ones. So make sure to keep watching and we're going to talk all about them. Well, you know, we get so many calls and messages from people that are thinking of moving to Scottsdale. They have lots of questions, and I can totally understand that. And we're here for you. You know, we both lived in Scottsdale for a long time. And so we're very familiar with the area. We know all the ins and outs, uh, where to eat, where to drink, where to go to school, all of it. So if you have any questions about this area, reach out to us. We're more than happy to answer your questions. You can call us, you can send us a DM, a text, email, however you want to get a hold of us. We're here for you and we want to be able to answer all your questions. You can also make a comment below and we'll monitor that and we'll answer your comments there too. Yep, and all our contact information is listed right down below. That way you have easy access to whoever you want to get a hold of us. All right, let's dive right in. Now, our number one, and I guess I should say these are in no particular order, but uh, let's start it off with our winter visitors. They are a double-edged sword, both positive and negative, but in this video, we're just gonna be brutally honest and tell you about the negatives of having them here, and then towards the end, we'll let you know, you know some of the positives with it of why it's not too bad. But winter visitors, when they come in, it makes everything super busy. Traffic increases drastically. A lot of times, to be honest, the winter visitors, since they're on vacation time, they're not exactly the best drivers out there. Most of them are fine, but there are some, and it inevitably is one of the visitors that uh, you'll see stopped in the middle lane at a green light or something, looking at a map or Trying something. to figure out where they're going. Exactly, or driving super slow, cutting across lanes of traffic because they missed a turn, or a bunch of other nonsense, but just, be aware and you'll have to take it a little bit slower and be a bit more patient. And I know that's very frustrating for a lot of us when all we're trying to do is get to and from work or to a meeting or something else going on in our normal day-to-day -day lives since we aren't on vacation since we're living here. Um, but just take that in mind and just be in the mindset uh, during these winter months that you're going to have to be a little bit more patient and to give yourself a little bit more time when you're trying to go someplace. Yeah, now when it comes to uh, wanting to go out for dinner, you're probably going to have to make a reservation because most of the restaurants are going to be very busy uh, at this time of year. So unless you go really, really early, and I'm talking by 5 o'clock, you probably are going to want to call and make a reservation, even the kind of the modest restaurants around here. Yep. Normally during off-peak uh, times of the year, which is any time but winter, from about uh, late November to about March or so, you can basically go to almost any restaurant and just get seated whenever, any time of day. Some of the more popular ones, even in the off times, you'll still need to make reservations, but... As a general rule, as Barb was saying, uh, those get very busy too. And also, since we have so many visitors coming down, the price of recreational activities goes up drastically during the winter time. Which one, the winter is our prime season. That's when the weather is the nicest because uh, most days the highs are in the mid 60s to low 70s, which is beautiful and sunny. But that combined with the sheer amount of people coming down wanting to do those recreational activities means the prices go up. For instance, golf. The average course might be run you 20 or $30 during the summer or off-peak times of the year. And that same course would run you 120 to $150 during the winter months, which fortunately it's a supply and demand issue. And when there's, when there's a lot of demand and the supplies remains the same, that means the cost is going to have to go up. So. Yeah, when it comes to some of the other activities like pickleball. Pickleball is really, really popular here. And it seems like the morning time is the most popular. So we found that if we went like in the early afternoon, typically the courts are a little less busy. But if you're going to go and want to play pickleball in the morning, you're probably going to have to wait a little bit. The same thing with the hiking trails. They can get really, really busy, especially if it's a holiday weekend and in the wintertime. 
they can, it almost seems like a continuous uh, stream of people hiking up and down the mountain. So again, if you go, can go a little bit later in the, in the morning or early afternoon, uh, those are a little bit better times and a little less busy on the hiking trails and the pickleball courts. Yep, absolutely. And that goes basically for all recreational activities, both indoor and outdoor this time of year. So just keep that in mind um, that that's going to happen. So just be prepared and give yourself a little more time and be a little more patient. So the next thing up on the list for Scottsdale might be a concern for you is our cost of housing. With the average cost of $567,000 for a home in Scottsdale right now, that is uh, pretty, pretty expensive. And that's that's average, so. And I just wanna say that 567 takes into account uh, condos and townhouses for purchase as well, not just that's single true. family homes. The actual single family home average cost is gonna be a, a decent bit more than that. And, Scottsdale area, but that's just average housing for all types of home costs for purchase. Yeah, I would say uh, a home would uh, the probably the average is is pushing almost eight nine hundred thousand dollars. So while there's a lot of pros about living in Scottsdale, it is one of the more expensive communities in the Phoenix metro area to live in. So you just are going to have to be prepared for that if this is the community that you really want to be able to live in. Yep, absolutely. Just uh, those costs and stuff, just make sure all the financials line up and everything. And if they do, Scottsdale is a beautiful place to live. But being desirable, it's, again, that's pesky supply and demand kind of thing. So the costs are going to go up, unfortunately. So next up is the distance we have to travel. So Phoenix is a very spread out city. Now, most large cities are good size and it takes time to get from one side to the other. A lot of them are much smaller on a physical area aspect. And we are lucky in Phoenix, in the whole Phoenix metro area, but especially here in Scottsdale. Scottsdale is a very, very long city, north to south, over 20 miles north to south. And specifically in North Scottsdale, north of the 101, the distance you have to go to get to just a grocery store, a lot of other areas is quite far. Depending on where you're at, it might be 10, 20, maybe even 30 minutes just to get to your closest grocery store or gas station. And that can be quite annoying sometimes if you're just trying to go and do something or if you're trying to get into the city and into work. Because if you are working, let's say, in downtown Phoenix area and you live in the far north of Scottsdale, it's going to take you 45 minutes to maybe an hour or so through traffic to actually get down to the office and same thing going back up so that's one of the negatives but that's more in north scottsdale far north scottsdale if you're living more in central scottsdale or scottsdale corridor it's going to be a lot more convenient to shopping and gas and getting to and from work and everything like that because we don't have any uh, major highways or anything going up to north scottsdale yet they're just surface streets while their speed limits are higher, it's still a ways out there. Cause and there's a lot of traffic, too. I mean, there's a, you know, a lot of people. It's, Scottsdale's just a desirable place to live. A lot of people want to live here, and that brings in the more traffic. Yep. Uh, one of the major roads going up there is going to be Scottsdale Road, and that's one of the only major north-south roads going. So during those prime times of day, everybody's going to be using that road, and traffic gets to be pretty heavy, even though it's relatively sparsely inhabited in terms of quite a uh, ways and a lot of area between you and your neighbor. But when you're all going on the same road, it backs up a little bit. So one of the things that I really don't like about living in Scottsdale is some of the creepy crawlies that we have. So depending on where you live, if you live the, anywhere that's close to a desert area, you might have javelina, you might have coyotes, you might have rattlesnakes, you might have scorpions, there's some bobcats. Occasional um, mountain lion if you're in the Occasional mountain outskirts. lion if you're in the far, you know, like up towards the mountain areas. So, but again, you know, this is, if you, if you live close to the desert area, these are some of the things that you're gonna find. So there's always ways to be able to avoid these things. So for example, the scorpions. If you get rid of their food, then they're not gonna come around. And there are think ways that you can treat your home against the scorpions. Same thing with snakes. If you have like barriers around your property that don't allow snakes to get in, then you don't need to worry about it. Uh, some of the other animals, there's just nothing you can do about it. They're in the area. 
I mean, a lot of these homes, this used to be all desert area, so we kind of took over their their homes, and so they're, you know, ju they're just looking for food. So as long as their food source is not available, probably gonna stay away from you. And honestly, these animals are probably more afraid of us than we are of them. So as long as you make yourself loud and known, then they're probably gonna run away from you before you get there. Exactly, even things like rattlesnakes, unless uh, one's sleeping, you actually step on it, they will let you know long before you get right up to them with their rattle to go away. Likewise, other animals, as long as you don't touch them and give them the space, they'll be just fine. But a nice fun story is, uh, hey Barbara, do you wanna tell our viewers here about uh, the javelinas in your potted plants? Yes, yeah, so javelinas love geraniums. So if you live in a desert area, you might want not want to plant geraniums in your front yard because the javelina love to eat them. And ask me how I know that. Yeah, I remember uh, you had to replant them about five or six times and they kept getting eaten by the javelinas. Yeah, you think I would have learned after the first couple of times, but I, I love, you know, the fresh flowers out in the front of the yard. And so I thought I would try and... I tried all different ways to try to get them uh, to not, uh, you know, come and eat them. There was like deer pee and all uh, just nasty things that I sprayed on my plants to try and it didn't work. So trust me, <laughs> if you live in, a, in an area that there's javelina that tend to come around, you probably don't want to put fresh flowers out in your front yard. So the last one up on the list, and this is probably the biggest one, and that's the summer heat. Ooh, yeah. Now our winters are amazing and beautiful. Same with falls and springs. They're super nice and pleasant to go outdoors, but our summers can be brutal. Those three or four months in the summer, they're now, hot. If you do live here and you have lived here for a while, uh, you tend to get used to it. I myself, um, going to high school and playing sports here when I was younger, especially during the summer months, you tend to get acclimated pretty nicely to the heat. Although you still have to take precautions such as making sure drinking plenty of water. Um, a tip I have for everybody is make sure you have at least one bottle of water in your car. That way if you're out in summer, if something happens, you know, you have some water and always stay hydrated. But you do eventually get acclimated. But for three months or so out of the year, the temperatures are gonna to be touching that 110 almost every day. Nice and sunny, so there's not really gonna be any clouds to block into the heat or give any cooling. Uh, winds are usually super minor and maybe slightly breezy at most. So it's not really gonna be able to push that heat out too much, so it's tough. But if you do live in one of our northern cities around the country or anywhere else around the world that gets a good amount of snowfall and a proper winter where it gets really cold, treat it kind of like that, just sort of the opposite. Where in yeah. winter up in those places, you go from your heated home to your heated car to heated wherever and you have to make sure to wear the proper clothing to be warm outside. Or you have to put on the warm clothes in order to stay uh, nice and warm as you're going outside. Likewise, here in summer, you'll go from your cooled home, your AC home, to your AC car, to your AC location, and you wear clothes that are appropriate for the heat and just making sure that, you know, you're ready for it. But I know the first time being out here in summer, it is going to be a drastic change for if you're not used to the heat. Yeah, speaking of AC cars, so a couple of tips for cars here in the summertime is number one, shade is a premium. So when you get to a parking lot somewhere, you're always going to look for a shady spot. The other thing is you're probably going to want to get one of those sunshades uh, for your windshield here. And they're all over the place. I mean, you can get them at Target or, you know, uh, Walmart or, you know, any, a lot of the stores, the, um, you know, Home Depots, things like that, all carry the sunshades. So those are really, really important to use in your car. Number one, it protects your dash from the sun but it also helps to protect the steering wheel because the steering wheel, co wheel can get very, very hot if it's in the direct sunlight. Oh yeah, especially any metal surfaces on the inside of your car too, such as a shift knob or door handles and things like that can get very, very warm. Um, although another tip uh, I have is personally, I do not use those sunshades in my vehicle. What I did instead, it was a slightly more permanent solution with um, UV uh, repellent window tint. And if you are planning on being here for a while, it uh, costs more than a sunshade. Um, a sunshade will run you anywhere from 20 to $100, depending on how nice of one, or if you get a custom molded one, versus the nice UV tints that uh, really reflect that light and keep your cool 
or keep your car, excuse me, uh, nice and cool and protected from the sun, mm -hmm. we're gonna run you over $1,000 or so. So it's more of a permanent solution uh, where you don't have to worry about uh, remembering to put the window shade up, but definitely those two are big ones. And also it's just a good habit to avoid touching any metal um, that's exposed to the sun. Well, those are our top five things. If you think that you can last through those top five things or want any other tips on how to deal with them, please reach out to us. We're always here and more than happy to give you any information Call we can. Um, but if you do think you can get uh, through those, Scottsdale might be the perfect spot for you. But thanks again for watching. Uh, if you haven't already and you did enjoy the video, please hit that like button. If you haven't, subscribe. It helps us out a ton. We really appreciate it. And then get that bell icon on. That way you get notified of all our future videos. Well, we'll see ya. Bye.